So as promised, I'm making this video uh, for those who ask me to speak about how to eat with holiness, how to eat as a Jew. Um, and this is something that I'm very passionate about because it's one of the most um, undiscussed topic within Judaism and perhaps uh, in, in the whole world. Um, eating is the first thing we do when we're born. I mean, first we breathe already, obviously we start breathing. And the first thing after breathing is the mother uh, breastfeed the baby and the baby eats. The first connection to another human being is through eating. Therefore, already as a baby in our psycho psychological um, mind, we, our neurons, neurotransmitters, already design and wire our feelings and understanding of eating as something that connects us to someone we love, someone that provides for us, someone who is here to protect us, the source of our life, a source of goodness. And therefore, it makes sense that one, the first thing that God asked Adam after he gave him the breath of life, just like a baby is born, it's the breath of life, the first thing that God asked Adam is go eat. God, so to speak, wanted to nurse Adam. I want to, you to understand I am, I am the source of your good. I am the source of love. I am here to protect you and to give you what you need. Rabbi Sadok Akoen of Lublin in Prit Sadik, verses 8, explains that what was the mistake of Adam Arishon? The mistake is that it's not actually that he ate. It's he ate with the wrong intention. He ate with the improper kavana. He was on a very, very spiritual level. Our rabbis, the Kabbalists, explained that he had the body of light. So we're speaking about the spiritual food, just like the manna, when I was given in the in the desert. Um, but nevertheless, it's all connected. When, and perhaps to remind us that when we eat on a physical level, it is um, not just a metaphor, but it is teaching us on how to eat on a spiritual level. What is eating? Eating is taking something outside of me and putting, in, putting it inside of me and incorporating it into my body. It becomes me. I am, you are what you eat. You, the, the food becomes you. And that food gives you energy. You digest it, you process it, and it gives you energy. And in fact, eating is nothing else, nothing else than to teach us how to take from this world and how to process this world and how to use it in the proper way. So whether we eat music, we hear music, it goes into our ears. Whether we eat visions, we see something and it becomes part of it. We eat smell becomes part of us. We eat knowledge. We, we learn something and becomes part of our intellect. Everything needs to be um, appreciated or analyzed. There's the taste buds, the sound buds, so to speak, and the eyes buds. Everything that goes into us 
has a taste, has a smell, has a, a, a sound, has a vibration, has an energy, and we need to process it in order to know, is it good or is it bad? Is it good for me or is it bad for me? Is it good information or is it false, destructive information? Is it kosher or not kosher? Kosher music, non-kosher music, good smell, bad smell, good information, false information. And therefore, when we eat, we understand that it has to do with life. And God made that we cannot live without eating. There's even a pasuk that says that, that we don't, by bread, man doesn't live just by bread alone. There's a lot of different ways to nourish ourselves. But... Because you have to be reminded that the real source is the spiritual source. The, the physical is just a, an example of that. And so, it's something that we need to learn. Sometimes we don't understand that learning Torah is not learning just information on how to be religious. Learning Torah is learning how everything we do to the most basic mundane action it is all part of the process of getting close to god and now that we understand that eating is such a important action because we know there's a concept in judaism the more something you do the more important it is the more there's um, holiday like Shabbos. Shabbos is more important than all the, all the other holidays because it happens every week. And many other concepts like that. Examples like that. So how many times do we eat? We eat most of us three times a day. Um, some eat all the time. That is not good. <laughs> but um, we know that eating is a constant part of our daily life. If we didn't need to eat, we didn't need to. We wouldn't need to work. Most of our work goes into the food, so we can feed ourselves, our family, our kids. So eating is something that we do all the time. And if we go in Judaism, the whole Judaism is about eating. Every holy day, we have need to have a meal. Every Shabbos, there's three meals. Every the one commandment the one blessing from the torah that we're commanded to do as opposed to as some say two there's also the blessing on the torah but let's say the two so the two commandments or at least are according to all opinion the one commandment of making a blessing is birkat amazon is blessing after food all the other com blessings are commandments from the rabbis with the exception of the commandment of, of, of blessing before the Torah, according to many opinions. So, the idea is that we we see that eating takes a huge, a huge place in our Judaism. Not only that, every celebration there is food. Every um, um, the, the the temple, the whole avodah of the Beis Hamikdash. When in, Jer in Jerusalem, when we had the temple, the temple could be looked, they have deal as a big kitchen, a kitchen where we bring offerings and we bring the the animals and the and, and the plants and we cook it, prepare it, burn it, barbecue. And it's eaten by the people. Most sacrifices are eaten by the people. So, and that's what we use. We use the a korban. What's a korban? An offering. The real translation of an offering, or people say sacrifice, but sacrifice is, has a negative connotation, uh, especially nowadays. Um, the offering, and uh, by the way, I want to give that point. When... People say, oh, why do you sacrifice? This is terrible. Why do Jews sacrifice? You know, it's what the, about the animals. 
Well, each time you eat an animal, you sacrifice the animal. You're eating a sacrifice, right? So we have to understand that we don't just, we're not allowed to hunt in Judaism. We respect nature and animals. We value the, the, the animals and their laws, according to Torah, on how to treat animals. We're not allowed to give pain to the animals. And we're only allowed to use them for work in a decent way and for, for food. So, we respect animals very much and we value life in the life of plants and animals. We're not allowed to cut a tree or an, a flower just like that for no reason. We're supposed to protect nature. So, we take our, our table becomes an altar. Um, our table becomes a misbeach, a place of offering. And it's, we, we bring a carbon. So what's carbon? The word carbon comes from karov, which means getting close. We're trying to get closer to God. When we eat, when we give an offering, the purpose is to get close. Now, someone who will go in the Besamikdash, the Kohen, will explain to him why he brings this offering. It was not just like, oh, we burn an animal, everything is fine. The person had to understand that he had the reason for his mistakes, or sometimes not mistakes, it's for celebration, is taking the animal in us and... or, 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 or taking the animal that represents us and offering it to God, taking our animalistic desire and bring them close to God, directing them close towards God. We are the ultimate offering. Even says that in the Kohen Gadol of Gan Eden, Michael and Malach Michael, what does he do in the Besamikdash Shel Mala, in the Temple of Heaven, Gan Eden? He sacrifices the souls of the tzaddikim. He gives them as an offering. Meaning that, and that's the ultimate mitzvah of Kiddush Hashem, I'm ready to give my whole self to God. So, so when we go to the temple, we learn how to give ourselves to God, how to use ourselves for God, how to use to an animalistic self of God. And the Kohen will explain how this offering brings you close to God. There's a lesson in each thing. It's a lesson each time you eat. It's a lesson on how much God loves you. It's a lesson on how to get closer to others, on how to appreciate the pleasures that God gives you. It's an experience of Gan Eden. Each time I eat, it's as if I'm again in front of the tree of life and the tree of good and evil. And if I eat the right way, I connect myself to the tree Etz Achayim, the tree of life. If I eat the wrong way, I connect. it's like I eat again from the Etz Adas. The way we eat... The way we incorporate things from this world will give us life or death. And therefore, each time we eat, we're give, it, it's a test and it's a battle. The Ramchal, uh, Moshe Chaim Lutzato, Zatzal, says that eating is a, like a war. It's a milchama. Lechem, the word for bread, same letters as so, um, when we eat, now why is it a battle? Because when we eat, we're trying, it, it, we're, 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 it, it looks like a battle. First of all, when there's an actual, you know, shechting the animal, you know, there's blood, there's death, and we cut the animal and we cook the animal and then we chew the animal and then we swallow and we digest. It's like a whole war, a war of the senses, the war of, 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 of fighting against one's evil inclination, the war of between the physical and the spiritual, the body and the soul. Am I eating for my just personal satisfaction or am I eating actually for my soul? to elevate the world, to elevate the animal in me, to connect to God. And so, we have to understand that eating, when I go to eat, I go to war, so to speak. 
And therefore, I have to be very careful. It's one of the, like the Ramchal says in Mesir Sheshayim, in introduction, everything we do in this world is a test. Everything is a challenge. Everything is a war. We're in constant war with the Yisera. And therefore, we can, and we have to know what to do, how to battle, so that we can get close to God with everything we do. Now, another secret of food that the Arizal explains is that we know there, the world was created on a Kabbalistic level on four dimensions. Physical dimension, uh, spiritual dimension, and three spiritual dimensions. It was called the four worlds, Abia. In Hebrew, it's called Asiya Yetzira Briya Natsilut. The world of action, the world of physical world, the world of Yetzira of formation, which the world already of the angels and the system that God put in, into, into action, the spheros, angels. And then the world of Briya, the, the world of creation, which corresponds to the Kisya Kavod, and the world of Atsilut, which represents where Hashem's light is the most present that we can connect to, to some degree. And then above that is the source, Hashem, and so um, And those four levels are levels to which we... It's like a ladder. One can think of the ladder of Yaakov with four rungs. So it's four ranks to the ladder to achieve God. We need to step up on those four levels. Like four dimensions. We have 3D and 4D. 4D Jewish, Jewish people now need to live in a 4D dimension. Four dimensions. So, um, those four levels correspond to the four levels of the soul. The Nefesh, the Ruach, the Neshama, and the Chaya. This is the fifth level of the Echida, which attaches to the, to Hashem on the highest level and to all the Jewish people and to actually to, to all of humanity, Adam, to all the souls of humanity. And uh, that, that's through that soul, we affect the world. So whatever we do on those levels of the souls affects the different levels of creation. But it's not a Kabbalah class, which I don't know Kabbalah anyway. So, but you can read in the books what that really means on a deeper level. I'm trying to explain on a simple level what we can understand. So we have those four levels and um, when we... So creation also has four levels. Um, of, of these four levels of creation. So the Arizal says this is the mineral world. Domem Sameach Behema and Adam, and man. So, the Medaber. So, Domem is the lowest level, the lower level of Asiya, of physical, is the minerals. Then you have the vegetal world, plants, fruits, vegetables. Then, that's the level of Yitzira. It's a more refined level. Then there's a more refined level, which is Behema, the high level. And then you have the one who speaks, the Medaber, men. And, um, and we need to elevate all, uh, elevate all those four levels. So when we eat, we eat those things. We eat minerals, we, need, we eat plants, we need animals. Now, we're not allowed to eat human beings. <laughs> we're not cannibals. Um, because the human being is the Olam is is the, the, the place of the highest elevation in this world. And therefore, we elevate the three lower levels to connect them to the highest level, the world level of Asiya, of, of Atsilut. It correspond to the four levels of the soul, nefesh, ruach, neshama, chaya, like I, I, I said. And therefore, each time we eat from one level, so I'm elevating the, my, my neshama enables me to elevate those things and that level of creation in the same time. When we 
eat plants, we're elevating plants and minerals. When we eat animals, we elevate plants and minerals that that animal ate. And we transform, we eat eggs, we, so we take the minerals, the, the plants, the vegetables, and the animals, and we eat it and it becomes part of human flesh. And it's elevated to human flesh. And the question is, wh wh how are you going to eat, use your food now? Do you have energy from the minerals, energy from the vegetal world, energy from the animal world? And now it's part of you and you, you, it's transformed into energy, new blood cells and antibodies and muscles and becomes part of you. And now you have energy to serve God. The Arizal says when we eat, we're feeding also the soul. So if you eat the right way, if you eat kosher, healthy food, then you are able to nourish your neshama also, your soul, and your soul is gaining also um, energy from it. So all, the, the, all those things are things to be aware when we eat. We see that eating is a service of God. And that's, that's what I was saying at the beginning, that most of us in the world don't realize that eating is a religious thing, so to speak. Religious is not a good word. It's a spiritual ritual. When you eat, it's a ritual. A ritual to come close to God, to Karov. And therefore, I have to learn how precious that is and how important that is. And celebrate the fact that, you know, when I say Birkat Amazon, I'm celebrating the fact that I was able to come closer to God by elevating this world. It was an opportunity. I was given an opportunity to feel God's love. When I taste the food, people, we know, you can go every day of your life to a different restaurant and you have a different flavor. It's incredible. Different pleasure. And we have the fine, refined cuisine, right? You go to France, it's incredible. You can get tremendous pleasure, so much so that sometimes it's an addiction. So we realize how powerful, how much pleasure there is in there. And why did God do that? We could have made pills so we don't have pleasure. Because God wants us to know that just like the mother's milk tastes good to the baby, he wants our food to taste good. And by the way, it's a hint when we learn Torah, when we say the blessing in the morning, Vaharevna, make your Torah sweet. It's using, it's using terms of food, of sweetness. Why? For us to understand that when we learn Torah, we're feeding our soul. We're feeding the spiritual world. Torah is to the soul what food is to the body. So it's all a process of eating. So we understand that it's something serious. When you sit down to eat, it's something serious. That's why according to many rabbis, we should not eat standing. We don't eat like we, while walking. We're not animals. We sit down. This is a divine service. I'm sitting down. My table is like an altar. So as some say, we should always have salt on the table. By the way, salt is hamelach. No, so the, 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 the salt is the same letters as milchama also. Remind us that I'm here to wage war with the physical and elevate the physical. The goal of war is to get rid of the bad and to elevate the good. And therefore, I'm eating, I'm, when I eat, I separate the bad from the good. My body process takes the bad out to the bathroom and keeps the good in. So it is a war. It's a digestive war. But I have to make sure that I eat things that I can elevate. Otherwise, it's going to kill me. We know more sickness comes from the way we eat. The Rambam has a special diet and guarantees that if you follow my diet... You will never get sick. How can he make such a claim? Because it's all connected, body and soul. People who eat healthy are much less likely to be sick. 
So, now that we understand that the importance of eating and how it's a spiritual service, we have to understand. The more religious one is, technically, the more careful we should be about our eating. So much so that we see by Hasidim and by very Bekubalim people who go to very holy people, they go just to look how they eat. Learning how they eat teaches on how to be holy and how to elevate the physical world. So, I have certain kavanos that I wrote on how to eat. Most of it that I've learned here, I learned from my rabbi, Rabbi Simcha Weinberg. He should live long. The Gesundheit und Stark. At least at Mervisrim. So it should be good for him. And should have a refuah shleima. And he taught me how to eat. He taught me how to serve God through eating. The same way when we go to a very fancy place, a fancy restaurant, you know, you have seven special dishes and special way to eat and, and special way to sit. You're very, you're doing something divine. It should have, there should be a sense of respect, of honor, of seriousness to it. So, these four levels of making a blessing um, that as, as, uh, as I explained before, the four levels of creation. So, the first level is level of Asiya. It's level of Asiya, I want to make a blessing on the level of Asiya. I'm thanking God for all the physical aspect of it. I thank God for for, 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 for. So let's say uh, I have a bottle. So I thank God for the bottle. I thank God for the water. I thank God for the transparency, the beauty of it, the taste of it. I, 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 uh, I pay attention to all the physical details. And I'm making a blessing, thanking, being aware of all the physical, how it's all used for me to serve God in a beautiful bottle and how um, it's delicious, especially when I'm really thirsty. That's the very simple level of Asiya. The second level of Yetzirah is when I'm, I become aware um, that where the water comes from, for example, the water needed to go through a process. Well, first of all, it was it had to rain. Uh, and we had to pray for the rain. And it had to rain. Hashem had to make clouds and condensation and the whole way how scientifically, scientifically it, it works. It came down. It went, made into, went into re rivers and oceans. And we had to extract the water from there or from lakes and extract the salt. Uh, purify the water, take away all the the bad things about it, um, toxins in it, and all that, and then we needed uh, fabrics for that, and thousands of workers to work in that fabric, and to have that fabric, you need thousands and thousands of other fabrics to be able to make that fabrics, and then you needed trucks to to transport the water or pipes. And then you need uh, an, another factory to make the the plastic to have the to, to make the bottles, and then we had to put the water into the bottles, and then have trucks that delivers it to the store, and the store it needs all the fabrics to make the whole store, and thousands of people involved. By the time you calculate everything from the well from where we took the water till the bottle in your home we're speaking about millions of peoples and thousands of factories and 
scientific research and whatever is necessary for that bottle to become drinkable. And so when I'm aware of the whole chain reaction necessary for that water to be there, why well, I say it's incredible that I'm able to have that. And I'm aware that God is part of every, everything is a little gift. Everything is all the little details. The, that's the Olam Ayetzirah. I make the blessing aware of everything necessary for that water to be here. Understand there's millions and millions of components necessary for that to happen. So I become amazed at all that. I try to elevate all that, to thank that whole chain reaction, to thank everything that was necessary for that process to happen. That's the world, the, 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 the blessing on the Olam, or level of Yitzira formation. It's a more, it's a, it's a more, so the first one, Olam Yitzira, is a more physical, pleasure blessing very physical i'm aware of all the pleasure the taste all that the color the world of yetzirah is a more emotional it has to do with the ruach the one before was connected to the soul the first level of the soul asiya corresponds to nefesh more correspond to the body the nefesh is in the body then it corresponds to the most physical aspect of man now, instinct animalistic instinct then you have the Yetzira, which correspond to the Ruach, which is the emotional level. So I see all that. Oh, Hashem must love me to make all this possible. Then the world of Bria, it's a more powerful thing. The world of Bria means that you know why I have this water. Bria means creation. It's corresponding to the Neshama. It's telling me, do you know where that water comes from? When I make my blessing, Say, Baruch Hashem, blessed are you, the, you, God, you are, you are the source of that blessing, the source of existence. You created that. You, and this water was prepared from the beginning of creation. When God created the world, He said, this bottle, this water is going to be designed for my son, Michael Noach, for me. Each one, each food that comes into your plate, it was given to you by God from the beginning of creation. It was all connected from the beginning of creation, connected to your soul that was there in Bereshit. Bria is Bereshit, same letters. And finally, so that's a level of wow, it's already beyond, it's incredible. And then finally, we have the world the, making a blessing on the level of Atsilut. So just to finish it with the Bria, it's a level of meaning. The Neshama is the head, it's the, the power of thought. It corresponds to understanding that this water that you're going to drink has, is going to have meaning to life. Bring meaning to you drinking that water. Ruach. The emotions, it's a seven level, is correspond to the heart. That's what's the emotions. Here's okay, the head. And then finally, the fourth level is the level of Atsilut, where I, I understand that this water, Atsilut means emanation, corresponds to Chaya, life force. I understand that that water is connected to God directly, to the light of God. Everything in this world is God's light, hidden, filtered. Mitzamtzem, concealed into physical physicality, and this is the emanation that I receive from God for me to connect to the root of everything to God. So just just like the light emanates from the bulb, this water emanates from God. It's light, and therefore when I drink this water, I can connect myself to the source of my life, Chaya, life force. Souls of my neshama, the source of everything. Um, the world of Atzilut says the Shishchachma corresponds to the world of love. The world of Yud the world of love. This is pure love. When you drink that water, you're drinking God's love. It is, and also when you say the Bracha, Shakol Nihie Bidbao, that everything is made 
by his word. This is the word of God. God said mime. And this is the physical, scientific, physical, material emanation of what mime means on the in the word of God. What mime means, the vibration of mime made this water possible. God said mime, and that's what came out. Sof masse marcha vatrila. Whatever was the last action is what was there in God's first thought. And so I'm connecting myself to God on the highest level. So we can do all four levels at one time if one is, you know, patient enough. <laughs> uh, one has to practice. So when when we do that, we elevate our soul, level, different levels of the souls. We elevate all the water of creation or whatever we are eating. If water is more, it's more, comes from the mineral world, so when I'm eleva elevating the world of Asia, if I'm eating an apple, I'm from, from the world of plants and trees, so I'm living the world, elevating the world of Asia. If I'm eating an animal, I'm elevating the world of Bria. The more we elevate something, the more we have to be careful. That's why for an animal, you have to be even more careful. Some Kabbalists only will eat meat on. On, on for Siddhas Mitzvah, on very special occasions when they know they're going to have the clarity and the holiness to pay attention to what they're doing because the higher you go in the world, the more you have to be careful. The war is bigger. You eat an animal, it's very animalistic, so you have, you have a lot to be careful about. It's very serious. It says someone, an Haaretz, is not allowed to eat meat technically. Someone who is not spiritual, doesn't understand, should not eat meat. It's better for him to be vegetarian. Otherwise, he's just eating like an animal and not elevating the food. Now, one reason, okay. I'm not gonna, originally we were all vegetarian, so to speak. Originally, we were eating just fruits from Gan Eden. No animals. And the Torah itself says animals and, and human beings were eating just plant, the plant world, because there was no need to elevate the animals. They were already uh, elevated enough. But when we sin, and not just when we sin, but especially after the flood, the Mabul with Noah, God decreed that we could eat the plant, the animal world because now with our sins we had brought all of creation the animal world also to a lower level and now there was a need to re-elevate it and one of the way to elevate it is to eat animals um so there, there, there is more obviously yeah but i think you have the most important part of it I wrote a little booklet on how to eat with holiness. So, if you want it, I can give it, send it to you. Send me your email or WhatsApp, I'll send it to you. Um, I'm just going to add a few more things. It's a good thing to say, Lishem Yichud, before we eat, which is to have the intention. So, just to give you an idea of the Leshem um, Yichud, it's, it's a meditation to have before we eat. It says, for the sake of the unification of the Holy One and His Shrina, I am not eating for bodily pleasure, heaven forbids, but only so that my body should be strong and healthy to serve God. Let no sin, transgression, evil thought, or physical pleasure prevent the unification of the blessed Holy One and His Shrina through the holy sparks of this food and drink. That's a basic... Um, Prayer from Rabbi Yebi, Sharet Sion, based on the Zohar. Um, it says that when we sit to eat, we are like a coin gadol, eating, like in in the temple, a, a sacrifice, as we mentioned, and. 
Um, and there's something that I wrote, it's a 12 step to eating. One of the powerful things you can do to eat with holiness, to not eat like an animal, is to eat the food and when you take it, first of all, appreciate it, see its color, use your five senses, smell, taste, uh, vision, touch, hearing. When you crunch also, it's people like crunchy stuff. There's a pleasure just in the sound of what we eat and the feeling. So be aware of all that. And on top of that, it's connected to the bracha om the level asia. When you take, don't don't take too much at once don't eat like an animal literally <laughs> uh, and you use the fork and you you go for your first bite try at least for your first bite if you can just do that already it's a huge level the ram Khal says if you want to work on being holy one of the first place that you want to be careful is to learn how to eat so you take your fork, take the pasta or whatever, and you bring it to your mouth, but you do it slowly, not like an animal. Say your blessing also slowly. Bless, if you say it quickly, it doesn't work. You're not just asking for permission. The blessing, the bracha is a meditation on how to be ready to elevate this food. So, you take it and you slowly bring it on slower than on the speed that a regular human being or animal will do. Because you want showing that I'm not, it's not my animal eating, it's my conscious self, my neshama who is choosing and controlling that eating. I'm serving God now, I'm not being an animal. So, I'm doing slowly and then I'm putting to my mouth and... I chew it slowly, slower than normal animalistic eating. Take your time. According to Rambam, I believe he says you have to chew 32 times. Your food has to become almost liquid. Don't just swallow it. You got to chew it. It's better for your digestive system anyway. You can ask the doctor. You should achieve almost a liquid state. In your plate, you should not have more than two-thirds of what you really want to eat ideally. That's the Rambam. What would you eat normally? Take two thirds, and you eat slowly. My brach, my rabbi calls it the brachos diet, because if a brachos diet, if you eat that way, you will never get overfull, and and you will not um, you, you, you will not get fat by eating like that. You will eat much less. So don't eat. It takes about twenty minutes. We know from the doctors for to feel what you ate. So technically, if you eat slowly like that. You know, at least at the beginning, there's more time for the food to come to your stomach and you will eat less. It's not a mitzvah to overeat. We don't want to waste food and we don't want to uh, just eat just because it's in my plate. Eat just what is necessary for you, for your health. Now, this is a high level. I'm not saying that uh, everybody can do that. But you can do it on Shabbos or on certain time. Now, Shabbos, we have to be careful. People eat a huge amount. There's no mitzvah to overeat on Shabbos. It's a mitzvah to eat special food, better food, more quality food. But to eat also with holiness. So if we eat so much that we can't learn and we're too tired and we can't, we fall asleep, it's, a, it's not a Shabbos eating. It's not, it's not a holy eating. So we take that and we swallow, especially I try to do at least the first or the, 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 the first bite that you have and then the first chewing, try to do it slowly. And be aware that when you eat, first of all, you get you to taste the food, to appreciate the, 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 the flavors and, and all the, the gift of pleasure that God gave you, all your 30, I forgot, 36 taste buds, I forgot how many, and you make, swallow it and let it go and you feel that energy, that goodness coming to you, that love of God going through your body. God is filling you with love. And 
that's how you can eat and elevate the food and um, if you do that just at the beginning of each eating or whenever you are focused then you can have tremendous experience a very high level of holiness and spirituality it will teach you to be pay attention to the physical world and the pleasures of this physical world how to use it properly and so we will stop here um i encourage everyone to have their own special cabanos i wrote my own cabanos i'll just read it one time we'll finish with that please hashem Help me give you nachas ruach through my eating. Meaning, help me give you pleasure that my eating should be favorable in front of you. Please, Hashem, help me transform my table into a mizbeach, an altar, my food into a carbon, my um, an offering, my desire to eat and drink into the fire on the mizbeach, and my behavior when eating into the service of the Kohen Gadol, so that I can fulfill Ishe Reach Nichoach Hashem. Which is what the good the fire that gives pleasure to Hashem. Please, Hashem, help me eat with awareness that this is an avoda. It is a serious spiritual experience. Please, Hashem, help me achieve vikus through this avoda. Help me attach myself to God with love through that food, that eating. Please, Hashem, help me be aware of all my senses: taste, tasting, seeing, smelling, touching, hearing. So that I can come closer to you with love because all those five senses is for me to appreciate all the different levels. And finally, please Hashem, have me become the tool you want to use to live at your world. Hashem who wants to give you food so because you are a worthy vessel to elevate that food. So may we all be able to use our eating properly so that we can elevate the world. And God willing, we'll be ready for going back to Gan Eden and eat on the level of Adam before his sin and celebrate all the goodness and the love that God has given us in this world to come close to him. Amen, amen.